Well, good afternoon. I hope you are not very sleepy after this wonderful <laughs> lunch we had. I have the honor to be the first speaker, and I'm going to talk about uh, why water has links to poverty. And maybe what strikes me more about the subject is that for many, many years we know all of us here as scientists and many members of the society knows that poverty is a problem, that in the world there are more poor people than rich people. That's a fact and we know that. And we know that the great majority of the world's uh, poor are concentrated in rural and peri-urban area. And now focusing more on water, we know that uh, poor people face problems that have uh, to do with the lack of access to enough water to cover all the needs, that they have uh, very frequently, if not ever, b uh, services of very poor quality, and they also are the people that suffer the most of uh, floods and droughts. So maybe many of the things that I will tell you later, you already know, but it is what it is, and what it strikes me is it will continue to be in that way if we don't do something to remediate it. And the question in general that I'm going to try to reply through this uh, presentation is uh, that if there is a role to play for science. And I would like to quote uh, Charles Darwin, if the misery of our poor because not by, not by the laws of nature, but our institutions, great is our sin. I think that uh, is describing that science is there, we need social science, we need to do, everybody needs to do whatever is needed to do to solve a problem. It's not only about science, it's not only about natural social science, it's about the entire society. Wow. Ah, did you read that to the glass? To the glass, okay. Or maybe to, to, the, to the guy that is behind the glass. <laughs> so, uh, water impacts on poverty, that's a question. When you ask that to any person, the most frequent really reply is yes. And people, uh, and when you ask people why, they say because people lack of water. And they, by that, they, most of the time, they are meaning this. They are thinking people don't have water at home. That's the first uh, uh, relation that people does when we talk about poverty and water. And yes, of course, there is a great relationship between water and poverty because of lack of the service of water supply. And we know that there, uh, there are a lot of people that still lacks of water in at home, but many more lacks of safe water at home. Even in uh, emerging countries like mine in Mexico, middle, uh, middle and even high class have access to water, but the quality is not good. The, the quality of the service is not good and the quality of the water is not good. Diarrhea kills over 1.5 million children each year. 80% of these deaths are clearly linked to uh, an inadequate sanitation and water supply. And we also know that the lack of sanitation has to do uh, uh, with these diseases, diarrhea, but it also has to do with many other diseases that spread through water. But also, and more complicated, we know that water has a relationship with the lack of education, notably of women, because many women are uh, taken out of the schools when there is no sanitation uh, uh, premises because uh, it's a matter of culture and we see this affecting uh, the education of the girls. Also, we know that uh, water has an impact mostly in most vulnerable groups, in, el in the elderly, in women and in youth, and that also the communities, the ethnic minorities that are geographically placed in the worst land, they have also lacks of water supply and water services. Hmm. It's better that. <laughs> yeah. But also, a lack of water services not only 
implies that people don't have access to water and they cannot use it, but they, that also means that they have to expend more money in providing them their services. Very often, the rural and the urban poor have to, pay, have to buy water from vendors and pay up to 100 times the price of the normal water. In, in that graph, you have the different uh, relations, how many times people pay more for water. Poor people pay more than water than regular pe people. But not only that, many of the people have to wait long lines to have the, the access of water when they, the water is distributed uh, through water tanks or when, or when they have to fish water. And this is time that the people use to get water and do not use in productive uh, activities, so they are losing money because they have to fetch their own water. This water that they g get from anywhere is also has an additional cost because they have to store the water and also in many cases because they have to boil the water in order to render it uh, safe to drink. The lack but continue this circle and, or this long line of uh, causes. When people have uh, difficulties to have water, they tend to use less water for their own purposes and they limit the water for cleaning uh, practices and increasing for that end the, the health uh, problems they have. It's already uh, documented that people that have less access uh, to water they tend to consume at the most 15 liters per day. And also there is a, a relationship between the time that uh, a person has to work, to walk, uh, to take, uh, to fetch water, or the time they have to wait in a line to have the water. And these two factors, either they, and what I'm talking about in here is either people that is in peri-urban areas that have to wait in lines to get water, or people that live in rural areas that have to walk long distance, distances to get, get water, they tend to use less water for their purpose because it becomes expensive, not in economic terms, but it, it, it results expensive in, time, in the time to, to use it. And water services, uh, in, it's also very documented that uh, uh, people in the rural areas has the worst situation because on the way in which we are used to water is very difficult or very costly to provide them with water because they are very dispersed, so the service is uh, very costl costly. We have developed uh, systems that are all central uh, managed and that is very difficult to implement in rural areas. And in many occasions, and for those that come uh, from uh, countries where you have uh, low income uh, regions in rural uh, uh, geographical areas, you know that the government has made in many occasions investments in the same place to provide water supply and sanitation with the people, but simply these systems are difficult to maintain because they are not sustainable because they are very, very expensive. This is, a, and what I have talk, uh, presented to you until now is only this first question. If water relates to poverty, yes, because of the lack of or the provision of the efficient services. And this is in, impacted in health, in food security, in reducing the opportunities for economic uh, development, and in having higher expenses for people that are mar marginalized. But the problem is much more complex because water this morning, uh, it was mentioned, is not only the problem of lack of water, also the quality of water is impacting the poor, water scarcity, but there are other uh, parameters that have to do with water that are uh, impacting uh, poverty. The impairment of water and without, uh, with that destroying the possibility to have access to ecosystem services and also two problems associated with having too much water or having not, you know, uh, not having water, the floods and droughts. I'm going to talk a little bit more on that. So the first part of, of uh, the presentation was water impacts on po poverty, yes, because there is a problem, 
with water services. This second part is what is about if there is an impact of water on poverty, yes, but in this second part is because the way in which we are managing the water resources. And we need to make this distinction because very frequently people confound the management of water resources with the provision of water services, which are two different activities that need to be addressed. And later we are going to summarize this on how they are being represented on the SDGs. So yes, and when you ask this to people, people uh, norm uh, normally people tend to say yes. If you are asking me about water resources, it's a, it's a problem because there is an adequate management of water. And the first thing that has to do is a physical scarcity of water. This is a map for 2025, but it's not very different if we draw it the, the map for today. In general, we know that there are regions that have more water and regions that have less water, which is, in, in, oh, which is in, interesting in here is to see a, this map, map differently you have these regions with much more water, which in general, this is in here where much more, much more of uh, developed countries are placed. Then you have this region with, where water is very scarce and you have many developing countries. And then you have these regions with middle uh, availability of water and we have mostly developing countries. So there is also a uh, in gen it's not true for all countries, but in general, most developing countries are placed where we have less water available. But it's not only about having or not water in the area, it's about having the technology and the financial resources to exploit water. This map represents what we call economic scarcity. Water is there, but people simply don't have the money to use it. And then you can see that there are much more countries that are affected when we consider this type of uh, parameter. Moreover, there is also a problem with the scarcity, not only because there is not f enough water physically or you cannot use it, but also because in some areas there is a higher competition of water that has to do not only with having more people. If you have more people, you will be using more water. But also in general, as the uh, as society tends, uh, it has a better uh, economic uh, level, they tend to use water. We have been associating the level of development with the use of water. If we have more water, we have jacuzzis at home, we have more toilets, and this is something that we should be trying to, uh, not to link the, the level of the development on using, about, uh, uh, using more water, because this creates a competition for water. Also about the water resources, we've been, uh, the, we've been told this uh, morning that we need to produce more food. One of the ways to produce more food is by providing irrigation. This is the easiest, uh, one of the easiest way, I think, to increase uh, the production of food. It's not only because uh, when you have water, you can, your plants grow better, but also uh, it's more profitable for farmers because they can produce all year round, instead of having one or two crops per year, they can have three to four crops per year because they can produce during uh, the rainy season and the drought season, but also they can grow uh, crops that are more profitable because they demand more water. Irrigation also indirectly increase employment opportunities because more wealth, wealthy farmers can afford to hire other farmers to work them on the field. All, uh, but this has a, uh, an impact on water. You have heard, and I'm uh, everywhere, that, ev uh, that agriculture is the user that is using the, mo uh, the greater amount of water. 
And here you have a comparison, the minimal quantity of water that is needed for a person to live is 20 liters per day. 50 liters per day is the recommended amount for a, water, for a person living in a city. But, produ but to produce food, we need 3,500 liters per day per person. So this is the difference, and that's why agriculture demands more water. But also we need to keep in mind that when we provide water to, to the agriculture, different to the industries, the agriculture do not lose the water because part of the water infiltrates and another part of the water evaporates. So ha for the poor, having access to irrigation will be very important to get a great, uh, to increase their incomes. But the problem is that normally the, poor, the farmers that are poor have, la have lands that have no access to water or are very far from water resources. They also uh, don't have the rights of water. This morning it was mentioned very quickly by uh, uh, my colleague from FAO that uh, it's about water and it's about land. And many people, many, in many occasions, the poor have land, but they don't have the rights to water. And this is something that has to be managed together for them to, have, uh, uh, to be able to produce. They also, uh, because they have less education, they, they, they have less information, and normally the land of area they have is very small. They, don't ca they cannot have access to credits to put in place irrigation systems. Also, uh, water, and that's uh, uh, the impact of water on ecosystems, uh, removing uh, or taking away from uh, the poor uh, all these uh, ecosystem services. When we, polluted wa we pollute water, the people that suffer the most is those that, have, uh, that are poor, and they cannot use this, uh, their environment to produce or generate more income. Also, they are very frequently facing problems of, of, of over-exploitation. The, so, the water resources they have, normally they are over-exploited because they, are, they have less control. And this reduces their, capaci their capacity to increase productivity uh, or the potential, uh, the possibility to have activities that are linked to water, for instance, aquaculture or activities, uh, pro productive, productive activities. Concerning extreme events, the poor are always located in the lowlands or in lands that are prone to floods. And it's frequently for, for them to, to lose everything. And there, are, there has been in recent uh, years many regions in which the poor lost all their properties, all their uh, goods, not only once, but even three to four times per year. And when a poor lose everything in a year, and the next time or the next lot, it loses one again, each time it's, more, it's getting more and more poor. And this is something that is more and more increasingly happen, happening in cities not only linked to climate change, but also uh, linked to the, uh, to the problem of uh, urban, urban floods and uh, the heat island effect. But also, it's also been recorded that the population is increasing more in, dr in dry lands. Why? Because these are the, the lands that nobody ones or are less uh, costly. And the population in increasing there is being bigger and bigger. And there is an association of the lack of water with an increase in poverty in areas where there is not opportunities to increase the development. Unfortunately, in this case, the economic impacts have been barely studied because the impacts of droughts as they are observed through many years are much more difficult to assess. So in, in general, water problems increase inequity and increase the marginalization of groups and increase vulnerability through all these patterns. And which is surprising is that this has a cost 
for the poor, but it also has a cost for the countries. There are some studies that show uh, that uh, the lack of water services only in Southeast Asia and Latin American countries represents all these problems, 2% of the gross do domestic product. For one country in Peru, they have made a better uh, estimation of the cost, and they, they found that this cost represents 4% of the gross domestic product, being 1% related to water uh, diseases, but also uh, there are other costs associated to other impacts on the resource and the possibility to have a production, for instance, aquaculture, or in the impact on soil degradation and deforestation. In all these contexts, what should be the government's role? Well, to manage the water resources, to control over exploitation, also to provide, the, to ensure that people have access to water services, and that water is available to ensure food security and economic development, not only for the poor, but for all. Also to ensure the re reli reliability of the water services, in this case for the poor, and this is uh, uh, something that should be highlighted, because normally when you, are, you want to increase, like it happened with the implementation of the Millennium Development Goal, when the governments try to increase the percentage of people having access to water, normally what you do, you start by providing more services to the population that result less costly. And the population to which results less costly to provide the services is not the poor people. So we need to find ways to manage to provide the services to this target population. Also to protect a population from floods and droughts. So in summary, uh, for this uh, uh, second section, is there a role for play to science? Yes, how? Assessing what is going on, understanding how it works. All these that have been presented, uh, it's, uh, all these interconnections have taken uh, too many uh, studies from dis different disciplines to find all these interconnections, and also to find new pathways to uh, resolve all these problems. There are many opportunities for science to be part of uh, a better provision of water services, a uh, better management of water resources. We can identify many areas that goes from understanding the physical phenomena to get more data, but also for being more flexible. In many cases, uh, this morning also was uh, said that how we make people to change the way in which they uh, always have been behaving. And that happens for society, but this also happens for scientists. Also scientists, we want to solve the problems in similar ways, and we need really to start thinking also differently to try to adapt to the new circumstances. In here, two small examples to show, to show you how uh, science could intervene in solving problems. One is in a water uh, treatment in Jakarta. Suddenly, it was found that the demand of chlorine to disinfect water increased from two to seven milligram per liter. This is more on the natural science. The second is uh, more on the social science. And uh, sometimes we think that by not providing, if we don't provide the services to, uh, in this uh, case, a certain uh, social class, there is no problems. But if we don't provide water services to the poor, and there is a problem of health, this can cause an epidemic and everybody uh, can be affected. So we need to understand that we are all together, that also m many of the problems that we see on, on a sector of the society can impact the others and has a cost for the entire population. We also, I think somehow the, the water sector, because it has to do with many other uh, sectors of the society, there are many stakeholders, there, ha there, there, there is an understanding that we need to combine natural, social science, we need to involve the stakeholders. We have learned that because we have had a lot of problems to implement any solutions. 
So we know now that the, uh, we need to produce sound-based solutions, but we need to promote these solutions to be able to be put in, in, in practice. What I'm saying is that we have uh, science and we have policy, but somehow science is in a part of the drop and policy is in another part of the, of the drop. We need programs, we need ways to increase this interface between science and policy. We need to make a way to permeate the results or the ideas of, uh, uh, of scientists to policy makers. This is part of the things, things that we're doing in UNESCO in the program I am heading, which is an intergovernmental program. In this program is the member states or the governments who define the problems and is the science, scientists from all the, over the world that are producing solutions. It sounds easy, but I think it's very difficult to create this interface. We need to find more ways, and in that context, I think there, there are a lot of, uh, of uh, I will skip, that uh, all, a lot of things that could do uh, organizations like this, like IAP. We need to promote solutions uh, through national and international campaigns. We need to, to find a way to provide policy advice. I think scientists, we like to provide policy advice. But if the policymakers don't want to receive advice, it doesn't matter if we want to provide it. So we need to create this demand, and for that we need to work and cooperate together. We need to promote more and more uh, international cooperation, notably South-South uh, cooperation. So in summary, has water a role to play on increasing and reducing poverty? Yes. How? Through the provision of water services and always trying to keep these two fields apart and the management of the resource in order to have enough water for irrigation, for economic development, for ecosystem services, and for protection and increasing the resilience to floods and droughts. Has uh, the science a role to play? Yes. How? Assisting governments to develop some programs to fight poverty. I put in there in question mark on the SDGs because I think we are a little bit late contribute in that process, but also by providing feasible and realistic options. So the solution must be feasible and have to be realistic. What is needed to increase policy science interface and, promote, uh, uh, and promoting international initiatives and cooperation to use science to reduce poverty and equity. Uh, when you start working in water, and I think there are many people in here, uh, we start doing may maybe something very technical. Uh, wastewater treatment plants, pipelines, whatever. Little by little, we understand that the problem in, is not water, the problem is poverty. And in order to solve our pipeline problems, we will need first to solve poverty. And, and to, to finalize this, uh, I wanted you to see uh, which is the goal, uh, the proposal for the goal for water. And if you see, it's very complex, you don't need to read, but in the two first uh, sections, oh. in the two first sections, you have 6.1 and 6.2 is about water services, water supply and sanitation. 6.3 to 6.6b uh, is about the management of resource, and this is too complex. This simply, I don't know how how can, how can you apply? We need to think something more simple. And in addition of these goals, we have in goal two, water is also there in terms of disasters. In goal 11, water is there also in terms of disasters, but for, uh, for cities. And in goal 13, we have once again water also in terms of disaster. Also, that is to say, disaster is spread in many goals, and the goal for water, which I really support, we have a goal of water, don't misunderstand me, but it's too complicated from my perspective to be applied. And with that, I end, I, I'm done. Okay. Thank you.